project is probably the most fun. It will also be the most grueling. So let's look at the camera shots, way to use your cameras, and how to best tell your story. The first thing to keep in mind is that video is a close-up medium. Simply shooting the scenes is not enough. You must get your viewer involved with the scene. You'll find yourself watching television differently to appreciate what you want to do when you're shooting. Look at broadcast programs in terms of shots, angles, and the way the scenes fit together. And here's a tip. Watch TV with the sound off. You'll get a better feeling for your own shooting. There are a couple of basic tips I can give you as preliminary to our discussion of camera shots and angles. The most important is composition. Be sure to leave an adequate headroom for your subject. There are few things as irritating as watching a close-up of somebody with the top of their head cut off. If you have a medium shot of somebody that's speaking, leave some room in front of them. This is called speaking room. You'll also want to leave room for somebody walking into your frame. With the exception of these two cases, you'll generally want to keep your subject centered in the frame. This shot is known as a long shot or wide shot. It is best used to establish a scene or to show that the subject is very insignificant to their surroundings. This is the medium shot, a very standard shot in video productions. It makes the viewer feel comfortable with the subject, and that's why it's used most often for news reports and commercials. A close-up shot demands the viewer's attention. Close-ups can add emotion or drama to a shot and make the viewer feel the subject is very important. The extreme close-up is a shot that should be used as sparingly as the long shot. Extreme close-ups can be very jarring and unattractive. They can also be a very poignant shot. So use them only when you need them for their impact. For smooth camera moves, especially if you'll be shooting for long periods of time, you'll want to use a tripod. Let's look at the camera moves you can make with a tripod. In this new video language that you're learning, moving the camera from side to side is called panning. Moving the camera up and down is called tilting. Panning right means moving the picture to the left, which means moving the back of the camera to the left. The opposite is true when panning left. Pans should always be smooth, easy moves that follow the subject and the horizon line. Or when used in conjunction with a zoom in or a zoom out, pans can keep the subject centered in the frame. Tilting up and down are moves that should be used for specific purposes, such as revealing something that the speaker is talking about. Like pans, tilts should be performed with very steady camera moves. If you're using a camera without a tripod, there are several ways to steady a handheld camera. This stance is probably the most common. It's called the Tai Chi stance. And it minimizes the natural body sway while putting you in an excellent position for smooth moves in almost any direction. With legs about 18 inches apart, you should turn your toes in slightly and bend your knees gently. Keep the camera tucked closely to your body. In this position, you can pan by turning the waist and tilt by moving your entire torso. You can even perform a move called a dolly, where the camera physically moves in towards the subject by sliding your feet along the floor and walking a little like Groucho Marx. It may feel a little like torture at first, and it can be uncomfortable after a period of time. But with some practice, you'll find that this silly looking stance can deliver you very nice looking pictures. On the subject of moving with the camera, I have a hint for you. Try to get into the habit of using a technique that has been used for years by people who work with microscopes. That is, stick one eye up to the eyepiece, but keep both eyes open. It will seem awkward at first, but after a little practice, you can train your unused eye not to see. This way, you won't be tired from squinting all the time, and if you start to walk with the camera, your unused eye will see things like curbs, tabletops, and other obstacles in your path. 
Let's look at some other camera angles you might want to try. You won't use every camera angle in every video production, but it's nice to know about these angles and their effect in the program. Camera angles play an important role in the way the viewer feels about a subject. A low camera angle will make your subject seem domineering. The opposite is true with a high angle shot. The viewer feels domineering. An establishing shot is usually a long wide shot that takes a full look at the scene in which your subject will be moving. As its name implies, the establishing shot lets the viewer know where you are, what time it is, what the weather is like, and other factors that you should know about the scene. The over-the-shoulder shot lets the camera lens look over the shoulder of the subject to see what they are seeing. The shot you're looking at now is an example of a cutaway. Cutaways may show something that the subject is thinking of, referring to, or something that will help explain what the talent is talking about. A similar shot is called the point of view shot. In this shot, the camera is placed where the subject's eyes would be to look at something that's the subject's point of view. Now that you've had a good idea of the kinds of shots you can use and what effect they'll have on your video productions, let's take a look at putting the program together. One way to avoid excessive shots in your finished videotape is called in-camera editing. We've talked about recording only the highlights of the event to tell the story. Now let's look at how to incorporate camera angles into that production. By using your pause button, you can record a segment, pause, change camera angles, and record again. The finished effect is edited videotape that tells the story. Changing camera angles is an important part of in-camera editing. Let's look at what happens if you don't change camera angles. The result is this, an irritating instant called a jump cut. Jump cuts are not only jarring, they scream at amateur video making. But by simply changing the camera angle, position, or shot, you can avoid jump cuts. Try it. Shoot a scene from a wide angle and pause your tape. Now move the camera to another position and zoom into a close-up. Record more of the scene and pause the tape. Now move to a different, more dramatic shot. Get the idea? In-camera editing does a number of things for the success of your videotapes. First of all, it eliminates excessive, unimportant shots that end up boring your audience. Second, it gives you, the videographer, the ability to tell the story as you wish. And it gives your finished video production a very professional look. When you're thinking about your event as a story, try to come up with a sequence of events that make sense. For instance, if you're videotaping your niece's